Hello everyone, this is Justin McPerney with White Collar Advice. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome my friend, Dr. Michael Brothers. Some of you might remember Dr. Brothers from a video we did last year called Don't Do This When the FBI Shows Up. I interviewed Michael talking about the case of um, his wonderful father, Lou, and of course, incredible mom, uh, Roe. So first, before we get started, Michael, your mom got probation, which was a goal of ours. Your father got a prison term. How is your father doing? He's doing fine. He misses us greatly, but the day-to-day -day routine is, you know, it is what it is. I call it big boy timeout, yeah. but obviously there's opportunity to grow, um, to make friends, which has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. And he has, settled, he has settled in quite nicely into the routine, I guess. Now, I should disclose to everyone, when Michael reached out to me well, more than a year and a half ago or so, I said, this only works if you and your family are willing to work and invest the time into a tea. They did that wonderfully. I think it's part of the reason their outcome was um, successful. And I'm grateful to you, Mike, for your support and your endorsements and testimonials. So you had suggested this video on visitation. I think it's a wonderful topic. So give us an overview of where your father's serving time and what the visitation experience has been like so far. Sure. Um, he is serving at the camp in Ashland, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, the big question was, how was it going to be when we visited him for the first time? Could we actually touch him? Could we talk to him? What was the experience like, especially for my nephew and niece, who um, obviously with young children, you want to be comfortable that they can go there and not sure. feel like they're in a penitentiary. penitentiary. So it wasn't, and, it wasn't Orange is the New Black when you walked in. There was no, you were allowed, you allowed to hold hands and give him a hug. There was some... You know, the rules say, uh, you know, a little in, uh, affection at the beginning, at the end. You found you were able to give your father a nice hug. Absolutely. And usually the guards are much nicer than that and yeah. allow for much more than what's written. But obviously you're one of their guests. Mm -hmm. You do want to do nothing to attract attention or to get in trouble. But usually they'll be nice enough if you do something silly to just simply corrupt you. And if you abide by it, they just frankly, want to get their job done and not to be there. Sure. So as you go through this experience, I'm going to impart a little of my prison consulting expertise to make it look like I'm smart and I actually know what I'm talking about. So Michael and his family was immediately approved to visit because they were listed in the pre-sentence investigation. So Lou, upon his surrender, still should, he asked the counselor to make sure they were approved to visit. Now, even if they had showed up and they weren't added to the visitation list, BOP policy would still allow would still allow Mike and his immediate family to visit. Outside visitors, some uh, prisons only allow up to 10. You have got to get approved. The form goes back to the counselor, not to the prisoner. Make sure the form is filled out correctly or else you're never going to get approved. Okay, if you have a conviction, if you have something in your past, disclose it further. The prison is going to want to ensure that you knew the prisoner before his actual surrender to prison. So that's some of my prison stuff to make me look smart. Now let's transition back to that first visit. What time did you get there? Were you nervous? Um, I know your dad had a lot of big goals for his time on the inside. Pris visitation can sometimes be a bad day if the inmate is down, if he's not being productive, if he's not pursuing the goals that he said were important to him. So tell us about like that morning of your first visit. Were you, you anxious? Tell us about it. I think every time you enter into a new environment you are definitely mm -hmm. anxious mm -hmm. and i don't know it's a three-hour trip down there so we made the three-hour trip that day yep um upon arrival you have to realize there's two facilities there's the main facility which in this case is a low mm -hmm. and the facility which is the um, camp and ashland's weird because they're the only camp i know of at least that actually does have barbed wire around the actual perimeter mm -hmm. the fence but mm -hmm. the low, you can imagine, it has much more of that than the um, minimal security. Right. Camp. So making sure you go to the right building, I think, is key number one. Um, I know from my mother's experience that if you arrive between about 10 o'clock and 1030, you can't get in to see mm -hmm. to see your my father because count is going on. So if you show up after it, you can avoid count. If you show up before it, my father is accounted for, therefore he does not have to go to count. So let, me, so let me jump in there and cover two points. One, your mom, despite getting probation, still has a felony record. And through the right. good works that you put in, she was able to get 
approved to visit your dad. I know that was a concern and we worked around it. So how quickly was your mom who had a conviction allowed to visit with your dad quickly? It was either the first or second week. So it was immediate. Excellent, because I've received messages from wonderful families whose the husband has gone to prison and, and the wife might be home. And the probation officer says, you're never going to be able to visit. Don't believe what you hear. There are some workarounds with the right plan. Now, you touched on something that's important. Taft, where I served time, had a 1030, 1030 standing count like Ashland. I believe they have a 1030 count. It's important for visitors to get there at the right time because if count is 1030, they're going to close the compound around 10. There could be out crew and do the census count. If you get there too late, well, Mike, tell us what happens if count's at 1030 and you get there at 10 o'clock. What can end up happening if you get there at that time? You're spending a lot of good time in your car. You're waiting. And the last time my mom and I visited, we spent 15 minutes in the car, which is not bad, but I think we all have better uses of our day than sitting in the car waiting. So the tip from that is if you're going to visit in federal prison, if you're going to get there, drive slowly, get there on time. There's a lot of people, a lot of cops that love to give tickets in these prison towns. Get there early and on time. Don't be rushing. Because if you push it too closely, they could have a count, which in some cases could take an hour to clear. And you could have either gotten there later um, or earlier. Now, Mike, let's talk about when you're waiting for your father to come in. So you'll get there early or, you know, they'll be waiting in the visitation room. They're going to page the prisoner. And this is something I know intimately well. They're going to say, Justin Paperni, Lou Brothers, report down to visitation. You have a visit. We're all excited. We're shaved. We're dressed nice. We're walking around the, the housing unit all morning waiting for our visit. It's a big day. While you're waiting for your father to come down, what are you doing in visitation? Are you beginning to get him some food in the incredible vending food cuisine? Are you talking to staff or other prisoners? Um, you know, What are you doing while you're waiting for your pops to come down? Fortunately, it's only about five, five minutes wait the times I've been there. That's so very that's good. The paperwork's the key thing. Make sure you know the prisoner ID number. Make mm -hmm. sure you have your driver's, uh, your license plate number so you can fill out the forms. They make you fill out two forms at least I can think of. Mm -hmm. One basically declaring you have no tobacco, no firearms. Um, the one thing that's nice to bring, as you said about the vending machines, is you can bring in a clear container up to $20, mm -hmm. which you use on the vending machines. And I know it's a big treat for them to get a Jimmy Dean. Um, They're good. It's not bad. <laughs> you know, yeah, I said chicken parm or yeah, yeah. Pepsi or soda. I mean, they're, the vending machines are actually quite nice mm -hmm. and frankly nicer than I had in grad school or undergrad at the dorms. Yep. So, um, you know, the funny thing is always that you have the uh, yellow dots which delineate where the prisoners cannot go past. Yep. And they cannot go past where they cannot handle money. So therefore, they're all pointing at which items they want. Pointing. So, I, do re I do recall pointing. A couple of things. When you've never been to prison and you're getting adjusted, it's still easy to think like a free person. So a couple of mistakes that I made. One, I touched money, which is, it's like a disciplinary infraction, actually. You can't touch money. I The prisoner cannot go to the vending machine. We point, as Dr. Brother said, go get us the cheesecake and the Coke, whatever it is. We point. Also, make sure you use is the prisoner the appropriate bathroom so there's going to be an inmate bathroom and the visitation bathroom i one time went into the visitation bathroom and a guard politely asked me if i had received a commutation or pardon from the president of the united states i said no i had not he said don't ever use that effing bathroom again i said got it okay so i wasn't quite thinking like a prisoner um i still okay so we can move on from that um now when your father arrived um you know, you can't fake it in prison. And as I said, sometimes visitation is a bad day. It's where you can get some bad news from home. You can't, you know, fake, hey, things are going great if they're not. So when you saw your dad for the first time, now your dad and I have been emailing and he sounds positive and upbeat and he's found his routine. Um, did you get a sense that he was following through on the promises that he had made to you? Did he seem strong? And, and you know, give us that glimpse because it's awkward when you you know, you're seeing your father in a prison uniform, and I know you love your dad, so walk us through when you saw him that first time and what that first visit was like. Well, the nice thing is, is that they're not wearing orange, and they're yep. wearing dark green, which at least doesn't feel as much like prison as mm -hmm. you would expect. Mm -hmm. um, the location itself is very nice. It's It feels like an upscale high school cafeteria, honestly. Yep. They have um, mm -hmm. cathedral ceiling and lights and things like that, so it felt more like a meeting place than it did a uh, federal prison, honestly. Yeah. Um, I think 
it definitely boosts their spirits big time when you can visit because I think the monot- monotony gets to people, sure. really. And so, yes, he's in the best physical shape he's been in for years, but I definitely know that their spirits, because they can only spend 300 minutes a month on phone calls, I maybe get to talk to him on the phone for maybe 10 minutes. Yeah. But if I go to visit him, I can talk to him for three, four, five hours, which is kind of ironic, but it's the way the policies are implemented. Okay, Mike, so what are you actually doing during the day when you're visiting with your dad? If you got three, four, five, six, seven hours, uh, how are you feeling that time? We just mostly catch up as to what is going on in his life, what's going on in my life, you know, about the house, about, you know, my sister, my brother, things like that. Mm-hmm. I've seen other inmates who will play in the uh, area for children, so they actually have a nice little nursery area they can play. Um, some people are playing Uno, Scrabble, Dominoes, some sort of games. But basically, it's just like you're, you're on com- the phone with them, except you get to see them in person. Right. It, it, I wrote a, in a blog in prison, it's sort of like an air, airport cafeteria. You're around some people you don't really know, but everyone's doing their their own thing. My family also played Scrabble. We grew up a Scrabble family. And my mom used to get upset during visits that some of the I's and T's were missing. So as a courtesy one time, she showed up to the prison with some missing I's and T's, and I thought they were going to remand her to custody and indict her and send her to prison. Do not bring anything to the prison, okay, other than your ID and some money, because um, it's just a totally different world. You know, it's just a totally different world. You have to be aware of that. Money. How much do you bring? Some facilities don't want more than $20. Some don't want more than a $5 bill at a time. Uh, is that what you've seen in Ashland? I know I've seen that in a number of facilities all across the country. So how much cash are you bringing? But usually 10 to $15. If okay. I bring $10, I can take care of myself and my father. We can get a drink, a sandwich, and a candy bar. But under $20 is what Ashland dictates, but nobody's counting bills is what I've seen. Okay, so let's, let's close with a few points. Uh, dress code. I mentioned, I've said that my mom was turned away a couple of times. For some reason, they didn't think that she was dressed appropriately because she's like she was 70 years old and totally conservative. It's insane they would send her away. I suggest bringing an extra set of clothes in the car in case some guard, you know, is giving you a tough time. Tell us about any experiences you've seen about, you know, the dress code so people fully understand it. I mean, again, if you dress, I would call it business casual. You should be fine. Um, the one time I know some prisoner's son or some inmate's son decided he wanted to show solidarity. So he decided to dress up in the same color shirt well, as an Ashland. How old was, wait a second, how old, it was a, a kid did it, how old was he? 13, 14, I believe, or 15. And, and tell me, I think I know what happened. So tell me what happened when he showed up dressed like his father. Well, they sent, they sent him away, so they had to go to Walmart to buy him a new shirt. Yes, Walmart does a lot of local business from guards turning them away. Pay attention to the dress code, everyone watching, I beg you. Few other thoughts. Um, I encourage your dad before he went to prison to save his visitation minutes because it's very nice to be able to call home and know that your family is home safely. So do you typically hear from your dad after a visit? Will he call home to make sure that you're there safely or maybe the next day or maybe through email? It's very comforting for that prisoner to know there's fam- their family is home safely. Do you sort of have that closure at the end of visits? We, he checks in with my mom every day, so he hears from my mom that I got home safely. So we use, they, they use the phone minutes. I drive down, my brother flies in, and that's how we um, spend our time to catch up. A few other thoughts. If any of you are transferring prisons, if, for example, you might be going to the residential drug abuse program, make sure if you go to the new prison, your immediate family will be approved to visit. The, your other visitors might have to get approved again. You never know. The list might not follow, so just do not have them show up have them call ahead of time. Further, some federal prisons have different scheduling systems. Taft, where I served time, was on a point system. Others go based on the BOP number. Is it odd or even? Mike, I think you said that at Ashland, you're just allowed six straight visits a month? Correct. Okay. If you have a legal case pending, your your lawyer to visit will fill out a separate form. They could visit off hours. If unfortunately you are in the SHU or your loved one is in the SHU, you can still visit, albeit at a potentially a separate time. So there's a whole lot of things to cover about visitation, and unfortunately Mike and I cannot cover all of them in this video. Mike, as we wrap up, um, 
you know, I've been very thankful of the support of you've given to us at White Collar Advice. You frequently reached out and responded to potential prospects about the work we do and the, the value that we provided to your family, and we're grateful um, for that. So I personally want to thank you. Can you close with some takeaways, some thoughts on visiting in, in a federal prison and just some advice you'd have for those um, who will soon endure it? Sure. Um, I would say just as you say about going to prison, it's not the worst thing you'll think of. Mm -hmm. It's not the worst thing with the cell phones and the orange jumpsuits mm -hmm. and things like that. But at the same point, you're still in a controlled environment visiting a federal institution. So just do your homework and make sure that you are respectful and being um, responsive to the needs of the inmates and of the guards. Excellent. Mike, uh, Happy New Year. Thank you so much for your time. For our second video, we'll have to do the third one, the hat trick this year. Excellent. Thank you so much for contributing. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us, Justin. And uh, if anyone ever wants to reach out, you're more than happy to reach out to me. Thanks, bud, very much. Bye-bye.